So, you've decided you want to start a club, but you don't have enough money, and you don't really have that much specialised hardware in order to make equipment that you might otherwise need. But of course you can't afford to buy it in the first place. So what can you do now to make a decent training tool? And the answer is you can make one of these. All right. Now, I did not come up with this idea. I saw this on uh, the Society of American Military Swordsmanships page, which I'll put below and also at the end of the video. But essentially what he had was he made a single stick for using, uh, for practicing with saber or to practice saber with. So how did he make it? Well, first you get a length of dowel, okay, in his case, and you cut it to the appropriate length. Then you get what he called a, a sort of bath shoe or a shower shoe or something like that, okay, that in Australia we just call them flip-flops or thongs, okay, and you get one of those and you put it on like that. You then get a piece of pipe insulation, okay, and you simply slide that over the end and on his version, he had a little plumbing cap that he stuck on the end to act as a pole. Done. And as you can see here, it works, okay? I can use this quite happily for backsword, broadsword, or saber, or anything like that. Total cost of making it, in this particular case, probably about seven bucks, averaged out, okay? But, there are a few differences between his and mine, and probably yours, depending on where you're watching this. Number one, living in Australia, our timber functionally is different. A lot of the problem with Australian timber is that it works really, really well for creating a weapon. It's been done for millennia by, of course, various Aboriginal groups or Aboriginal peoples. Um, it works really well for making quarter staves, for example, so pole arms, halves, it works really well making a whole number of those sorts of things but the problem with that kind of stuff is that there is no training variant of it when you cut down a tree okay or when you you go to the hardware store and buy a piece of timber hopefully not pine you are essentially creating the weapon there is no training variant of it in order to create a training variant of it you have to modify it really heavily and the problem is in is Australian timber a lot of Australian timber just doesn't lend itself to it. A classic case is Taz Oak, or what we call Taz Oak, which is good for quarter staves if you want to make a weapon and then use it at a slow pace. It can be used for single sticks, and I'll show that in another video, but really they're less single sticks and they're more cudgels, and the fact is you still need to wear a lot of protection with them or do really controlled drills, great for building strength though, and at the end of the day, if you try to make them super safe, so quite thin, of a relative length, they break really, really easily. They just shatter, okay? So they're not very good, they're very hard, and you still can't thrust with them, okay? So you're not gonna use Australian timber. You, you might use them in America or in Europe if you can find suitable, but I didn't. What I used instead was a bamboo garden stake. Now, I have a whole video on how to select the optimal bamboo garden stake in order for this kind of project. All right, but I'll post that uh, in another video, in a follow-up to this one, because this is gonna be a multi-part series. But what I have here is just your standard run-of-the-mill bamboo garden stake, okay? So we'll take off the pipe insulation, which is covered in tape in this particular case. Okay, he didn't cover his in tape. He also added grip tape to the bottom, but I don't really see a need for that. So as you can see, it's a solid piece of bamboo that is actually very thick. Notice the wall thickness, okay? It's not very big, okay? It's only about as wide as my thumb, all right? But it's pretty solid. This is just a bamboo garden stake that you can get from your local hardware store, most local hardware stores. It's a little bit longer, but hey, if you wanted to make sort of Matt Easton's uh, favorite Indian weapon, the dal thing, with the hook at the bottom, you know, you definitely could, of course. I'm gonna cut that off later on, but um, I'm figuring out a way to basically bring the balance of these back, because as you can imagine, it being a stick doesn't really have a very good balance for what we need it for. Anyway, 
So just with the bamboo stake and a flip-flop, straight away, you have a functional thing. Okay, you're good to go, all right? Problem is, though, is that you kind of need protection, okay, to use this. You need a fencing mask, you need some sort of probably arm protection or some sort of rules that basically mean that you can't thrust, okay, you definitely can't thrust with this, and you can't thrust with most wooden weapons either. And of course, if you get whacked on like an elbow or in a jawbone or something like that with this, you're going to have a bad time. Now, some might say it's completely reasonable for a training bit of equipment. You know, you don't want people getting complacent. But again, I'm sort of running on the idea that, like I said, you don't have any money. You've just started a new club. You probably haven't taught as much. You probably haven't learned as much. And subsequently, you can never assume that your students or indeed yourself will always do things as they should, okay? Rather, they tend to just go off and do stuff. Now, that might be your issue as an instructor. You need to be clearer. You need to be more uh, explained more clearly in a manner that actually resonates with the student. Alternatively, it could just be a case that sometimes the student just psh, won't listen. That's fine. So the fact of the matter is, whilst I would happily use this, okay, just amongst myself and amongst my friends, I would never bother giving this to a student. Pointless, okay? Too dangerous. So, of course, you put the pipe insulation on it. Now, that kind of improves it, but you still end up with a massive, walloping, hard kind of stick. There's no give. You still need to wear a fencing mask. You still need to wear some sort of arm protection, probably. You'll definitely need to wear, you know, a glove. You definitely need to protect your wrists, okay? So, yes, it works, and I think it's a great idea, and I think if you need to smash them out real quick in under a day, you absolutely should do their version. But, I thought I'd improve upon it a little bit. So, taking this piece of bamboo from a hardware store, all right, taking the flip-flop, which, by the way, you should get the biggest flip-flop you possibly can because the strength comes from being compressed like that. Okay, because that, well, there, see, there you go. So that's quite strong in this form, okay? Very hard to actually get through. But if you need more space, okay, for say your thumb or whatever, all of a sudden, it does that. So that can be remedied just by putting a little something or rather at the bottom here. I'll do that in a follow-up video. You'll see a finished version of this later. So you get your piece of bamboo, you get your flip-flop, you get your piece of pipe insulation, which is black. I have covered this in tape to reinforce it, um, to give it a little bit of... Um, give it a little bit of more durability because the pipe insulation is not very strong, okay? It will get chewing up. Even when you hit it on like a chair or something like that, it can actually rip and tear. But it's not too bad. It needs to compress. The foam you need to use doesn't have to be pipe insulation, but the foam you need to use needs to absorb impact, not be hard, okay? It's not LARP weapon. It's not... Uh, cosplay costume stuff it needs to be able to absorb it doesn't have to be thick but it needs to be able to absorb it pipe insulation is a good one already comes in a tube and tollow that's why it's used now how can I improve upon it well simply I took inspiration from of course good old Japan good old kendo this is obviously a shinai okay and as you can see it's made out of multiple staves four staves of ban danke bamboo quite thick as you can see all right just like that and they are held together okay by the this is the super um, I can't remember what the grip is called but they're held together by this leather grip okay which is a tube and they're held together at the tip as well by this leather tip which is the suka I don't know <coughs> it's a little bit more complicated than that but that's the basic principle okay there's actually a tiny piece of metal in here that pinches it all together and technically there's this whoopsie days there's this this black cap at the tip okay as well we're not going to do that anyway Stakata School of Defense has a video on how to convert one of these I believe into um, into a single-handed sword and I know Stakata uses them because I used to have one uses them prolifically for people's first training weapons if they can't get anything that's less the, that's sort of not so much the case now now that synthetics have become more prevalent but synthetics still hit harder than this 
okay? So this is actually quite safe to use and you don't need a lot of protection with it, maybe a fencing mask. Caveat, I have heard of people who have broken finger bones, broken collarbones, and broken the, uh, is it ulna or fibia? No, fibia, tibia, no, wait, hmm, can't remember. But the forearm bones in their arm by using one of these, okay? So, when you think about it, in kendo, they have the bogu, they have the men, the do, the kote, and the ta, tare, can't remember. So, these are designed to be used <laughs> with protection anyway. So, it's kind of, it's a bit strange that you're trying to reduce protection, and yet this is meant to be used with protection. Plus, it has no flex. It has no flex. You stab someone with this, you're jacking them with something that's a piece of wood. Same with just a solid piece of bamboo or a solid piece of wood. There's no flex on the thrust. So I thought, okay, a Shania is good, but what else would be better? And actually I looked at the ancestor of the modern Shania, which is this one. A Fukuru Shinai. So what have we got here? We have a length of Mandanke bamboo, which is actually like the quarter stuff I've made back there, um, which is a bit thicker, obviously, and I'll do another video on that. Mandanke bamboo, which is hard to get in Tasmania, yet alone import. You can get it if you live in Queensland in Australia. Easy. You can just go down um, to these great people who I bought this from. I'll put them in the link below. This is not sponsored, by the way. They just really were really helpful and told me all the kind of stuff, like even the genus and all the science behind them. They were really good. I'll put them below. But essentially, a length of bamboo, just like before. This is Mandanke, but in our case, we're not going to use that. Go down to the hardware store and just get regular run-of-the-mill bamboo steak. Now, with that clarified, imagine this was a bamboo steak. Okay? What the Fukuru Shinai is, is bag sword essentially they would have a leather bag that goes over the top okay of the fore part of it the blade part okay to add some sort of padding essentially and also more importantly to keep the staves together so pretty much like a really really long handle on a regular shinai okay and funnily enough it fulfills the exact same thing okay as our pipe insulation in this case all right but our pipe insulation adds even more protection even more padding okay but why would you do that pretty simple the ingenious part of the Fukuru Shinai design is that in the length of bamboo it is divided into quarters or thirds the first quarter which is the grip okay is solid bamboo nothing changes here all right and you can just sort of do whatever you need to do the second quarter is split into four pieces. Now, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Okay, so there's one, two, three, and then, of course, there's a fourth. But here's where it gets interesting. The second or third quarter, I should say, or first third, or second third, becomes eight. So four is then split again into eight pieces. Okay, if you can see, there you go. It's very hard to see. And of course, the last part is split again into, look at that. Can you see that? Look at how many there are, okay? So what we have is we have basically four, eight, 12 at the very tip splits, okay? Now, that's a lot of work and, you know, that you don't really need to do that with the, the, uh, with the idea that I'm going with, but that's the principle, that's the backing idea. So why might you do that? Why would you split it four, eight, and then 12 times? And the answer is simply this. Check it out. You can thrust. You can actually thrust really quite vigorously because remember, this was meant to be used in as a katana, so you're talking about two-handed thrusts, all right? So you have a two-handed you have a two-handed weapon that can thrust really, really safely. Um, if you're wondering what this little button here is, that's actually from a washing machine 
and it does the same thing as the black thing on the shinai. So you can thrust with this because of all the splits you can whack really quite hard, okay? So this principle basically means that it is incredibly difficult to get hurt with. You can thrust as well, assuming you don't thrust at the face, which means you can actually finally stab. And to back this all up, I think they still use Fukuru Shinai in things like Aikido. Um, so in Aikido, they don't wear any protection, I don't think. And so they just whack each other with these. So, oh, and here you go. So that's what happens when that little plug falls out. That's why you have it in there. It's to prevent them getting tangled up like that. So, what I'm going to do in a few follow-up videos is we're going to take this piece of bamboo, this solid length of bamboo, okay, and we're going to convert it into a Fukuru single stick. <laughs> we're going to turn it into a Fukuru single stick. I've already started, okay, on this one here. So this is the total length of a bamboo garden stake. You have to get them a little bit longer so that they're thicker, okay? Here's where the grip is going to be. And then, of course, it is split all the way up. So not split in the grip, four times in the first third, or second third, and then eight times in the tip. Um, and I'll explain why in another video, simply put. But the too long didn't watch is that eight splits is really, really, really quite difficult. The best part about all this is you only need a knife. That's it. You just need some sort of knife and you can basically make one of these, okay? So, sorry for the low quality of the video, by the way, my camera broke, again. So, in a follow-up video, we're gonna be looking at how to make a Fukuru Shinai. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background on the principle, essentially, the philosophy of the idea, okay? And how cheap it comes out to can be about seven to 10 bucks, okay? Maybe 15 if you really splurge, okay? But all you need is a length of bamboo from your hardware store, pipe insulation from your hardware store, a flip-flop, okay, and some tape. That's it, and you're good to go. And if you want to improve it, split it. Take it, get a sharp knife, split it four times in the first quarter, okay, or first, th uh, second third, all right, and then eight times in the tip. You don't have to split it as many times as it has been split on the actual one for the simple fact that, well, this is better quality bamboo than the ones you get in the hardware store. And as you can see on this example, it's still being worked on, okay. Hardware store bamboo tends to have cracks and stuff in it, which makes it a little bit harder. Okay. Uh, and if you want to make the tip even safer, get yourself one of these. Um, I've obviously cut the end of this a little bit, but originally this would be have a screw on it or some sort of ribbing. Okay, and it basically screws into the end of a pipe. And as you can see, it's just hollow soft rubber. Okay, just like that. And you can nail it. So there you go. I'm going to leave the video at that, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I will do a follow-up video on the Fukuru Single Stick Project. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Bye.